Ines San Martin, who covers the Vatican for Crux, an online newspaper. Ines joins us now from Rome. Uh, do you think it was a difficult decision, Ines, for Pope Francis to make, considering that for 1,400 years this uh, crib was in Rome? I don't think so. This is, we're talking about a pope who's been more than generous when it comes to answering for requests um, that have been issued by several authorities for different relics to be returned home or to at least be borrowed for different countries for different reasons, including, for instance, when he sent a relic of one of the apostles to Patriarch Bartholomew in, in Constantinople. How important are relics like this? I mean, probably the most famous in the world is the Turin Shroud. But how important are these relics in terms of uh, what they mean to worshippers? Do people literally look at these relics and think that they are closer to Jesus or to God by being able to see them? Uh, it, obviously, it, it depends on the eye of the beholder, but most Catholics and most Christians would actually tell you that they are, in fact, um, important in their lives, in their spiritual lives. Um, here in Rome, we have thousands of relics, a lot of them being held in the Vatican, but also, you know, the crib itself that is being kept in Santa Maria Maggiore, one of the uh, major basilicas here in Rome. And this is a city, uh, I'm sorry, a basilica that is visited by thousands of people every day who go there specifically so that they can worship the relic um, of the crib that's still here in Rome. Okay, I mean, I asked the question because, of course, uh, take, for example, Islam. Muslims are not allowed to worship any relic or any icon or any image that might represent the Prophet Muhammad. All of that is not part of Islam. So it's interesting to hear how Catholics might feel about these relics. Has the Vatican ever yeah. throughout its history... Oh, no, go on, Ines, you know, please, have your contribution to that thought. No, no, no I was just... I, I... I was just going to say that, you know, it, it is part of the Catholic tradition. It has been for a very long time. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we, we, there is a, a, a thorn that is believed to be a part of Jesus' crown of thorns uh, from when he was crucified that is kept here in Rome. Um, it's important to be said that it's not so much the relic that is venerated, but what it represents uh, for the, the history of the Catholic Church. Sure. Has the Vatican, over however many centuries, you care to go back. Has it ever uh, agreed to actually try to have all these relics, whichever they may be, verified by independent experts using whatever scientific techniques that these experts might have? Yeah, um, several of them have. Um, from, from some cases, including, for instance, the crib, there is some sort of documentation that has been kept um, through centuries that in many ways help um, attribute or help explain why the Catholic Church and Christians, not just the Catholic Church, believe that the crib um, was in fact where Christ was born. Um, in, for instance, you mentioned one of the most famous relics uh, for the Catholic Church, which is the Shroud of Turin. There have been countless of scientific um, studies being um, done to that shroud, and you know, several of them have proven that you know, you almost, even though it's almost impossible to confirm that it did in fact belong, belong to, to Christ, we do know that it belongs to a person who was crucified 2,000 years ago. And the, the wounds that are visible in the shroud do um, in many ways coincide to the, the wounds of a person who's been killed in the cross. Is it important for the Vatican to send these relics to other parts of the world? Uh, in the year 2019, uh, over the course of, again, say, take the past 50 years, it appears as if the Catholic Church is not as popular as it used to be, that its numbers may be diminishing in certain parts of the world. Is that another reason to send these relics to places so that people can feel closer to God and that the Catholic Church can get back what it has lost? I don't think for the Catholic Church is so much about getting back what it has lost, but to make sure that the faith continues and stays alive. Uh, it's not so much about the numbers for the Catholic community, but um, again, about the faith. And it has to be said in several parts of the world, including Africa and Asia, the Catholic Church is actually growing exponentially. And this is obviously an interesting phenomenon. And Pope Francis um, chosen or, you know, chooses for trips have definitely reflected um, this growth in Africa and Asia. 
In essence, in just about 30 seconds, if you don't mind, what do you think the Pope's message is going to be this Christmas season uh, to the world, and especially as he has sent this relic uh, to a part of the world that is ma mostly made up of Muslims, I mean the West Bank in particular? Um, I think it's going to be definitely about reaching out to those in the Oscars, but also about dialogue. The Christmas season for Christians um, is all about the, the waiting of the second coming and for the birth of Christ and the redemption of humanity. And Pope Francis' message is going to be aligned to that. And again, I have to um, reinforce this on the importance of dialogue. We've, we've seen Pope Francis go into United Arab Emirates. We've seen Pope Francis go into Japan, where there are 400,000 Catholics in the entire country, always okay. seeking dialogue, always seeking bridges. Ines Perfect timing. We have four, three, two, one second left on the program. Ines Martin, Adnan Nawaz, Ali Jana and Lan next. Bye bye.